This episode is brought by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Red Raptor Writes, where today I'm doing another museum review here. I did one of the AMNH. Was it for 30,000, 20,000? That was a bit, uh, that was a while ago. And now, this past summer, about a month ago, I visited Washington, D.C. And it, it was a great time. I visited the zoo there, um, saw all the cool monuments, me and my wife. Man, she's a trooper. <laughs> we walked around most of the, the National Mall, and she did a great job. It was fun. There was the Air and Space Museum one day, and of course we had to go to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. That's pretty much the whole reason I was there. Well, I'm a history teacher, so on one hand I have the dinosaurs, and then on the other hand I have the history or the historical figures, which was really cool. So I enjoyed every second of the trip. It was awesome. Uh, even if <laughs> DC is a fake city, it's basically like like an amusement park for, for like rich people or patriots. You could tell it's just a city full of uh, rich lobbyists <laughs> and politicians running the place. Um, yeah, so it's not like a real city like New York, for let's say. So for my experience here at the Smithsonian, this is my first time going, and they also recently re uh, renovated it. Uh, David Koch, one of the Koch brothers, right, um, donated a bunch of money and they we did the fossil hall and all that stuff. So it came out really, really well. It has a very modern and nice feel to it in terms of the paleontology and the accuracy. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what they got right because they got a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, it's not as big as the American Museum in New York, but I feel like it has more quality. So it's not quantity, but it has the quality of um, up-to-date portrayals and depictions. So I'm totally comfortable with uh, families going here and learning and they're not getting fed misinformation about dinosaurs and extinct life. So anyways, let's dig this up. Okay, so starting off we have the Wankel Rex skull. And this was named after Kathy Wankel and was found by uh, actually, it was found on um, uh, U.S. Army Corps land, but dug up by the Museum of the Rockies, and that's where the original of this is. This is just a cast of it. Uh, it's a decent-sized T-Rex. It's not as big as they can get. I think I read it was like 11 meters or 35 feet. So, still smaller than like Sue and Scotty, which exceed 40 feet in length. It was cool. This is in the... Uh, this is in the entrance of the building. So you come in, you see it, you get a taste of what's to come. And it's pretty cool. All right. So our first mammal on the list, I guess I'm starting with like the prehistoric mammals here. We have Eremotherium, which is a giant ground sloth. And well, this thing was a chungus. So right? I think it could have gotten over six tons. So a very large ground sloth at that. And you can see here like other relatives. It, it would have walked quadrupedally and then if it needs to get up and grab leaves and branches, it can do that and then pull them with their giant claws. Uh, I remember Ethereum itself lived in more tropical climates, so um, a lot in South America and Central America. There's some in like Texas, Florida, Southern US kind of stuff. Yeah, so these are mostly American, which makes sense because this is Washington, D.C. Uh, the land of Fallout 3, which is very good. <laughs> right. And next up, oh, man, that would have been so cool. Like, Fallout 3 was so popular that they actually decided to make Washington, D.C. just for the fans. I, I love that the government decided to do that. It was cool. All right. Um, so next up, we have the American Mastodon. Uh, they did have Woolly Mammoth too, but I don't want to repeat myself too much. There is a lot of overlap in the creatures and... Yeah, we'll we'll get to those, of course. Um, but I don't... Did the m &H have a Mastodon? It probably did. <laughs> I probably just skipped over it then uh, in favor of the Woolly Mammoth. But Mastodons are a little bit different. They have straighter tusks. Like, mammoths have, like, big curving tusks. Mastodons are, are more straight and forward-facing. And they have, like, a flatter head. Mammoths have like this big bulbous head here. Uh, mastodons are 
they're more like flat on top. <laughs> See, they're more horizontal, flat, like across. So that includes the head too. Where mammoths have, are like have a big head and then the body like slopes down. So um, still pretty different. We find a lot of mastodons. That's that's basically what you get in New York. Uh, we don't have a lot of dinosaurs. We got some dinosaur footprints, but we got the mastodons, bro. That's where we're at. And another cool creature I wanted to point out was the moa, which um, this is from New Zealand. Not too long ago, I think they went extinct around 14, in the 1400s, around 1450-ish, once the Maori people showed up and then just hunted them to extinction. Um, these are the only birds that actually completely lose their wings. They're just no front limbs. Their head, neck, and legs, that's it, which is pretty cool. And they would have lived with the Hass Eagle, which is a giant eagle that maybe would have swooped up your children <laughs> if you weren't careful. Um, but they both went extinct. Um, I would say, unfortunately, unless you are an unsupervised child, <laughs> which then, okay, maybe, maybe I see the point. And honestly, you may notice, we're just kind of doing a run-through of the different animals because, uh, I didn't really have anything to complain about. Like, everything seemed really, really good and up to date. And there was no problems, or at least no glaring problems that I um, were, was able to see by just walking through and looking at the exhibits. Maybe if you deep dive into this and read all the texts and all the charts, you might find something. But uh, as for a simple overview, no, it, it was like near flawless at least. So... Awesome. We're just, we're just going through it. And of course, this isn't every animal. There are a lot of other cool exhibits. But I just picked a few uh, a few interesting ones that I haven't talked more about or that I just absolutely couldn't help but put into this. So yes, the Moa. Awesome. Dead. Maybe that's uh, uh, someone we can bring back at some point. Alright, and next up we have... Uh, well, this specimen doesn't really have a name yet, or at least not like a genus name. It was uh, put into Sinoceropteryx, which is like an Asian compsognathid. But um, this specimen, I guess it's GMV 2124, it's like larger than Sinoceropteryx and it has some different proportions. I think a smaller tail, the different shaped legs and leg bones so while it superficially resembles like a consignated or like Sinoceropteryx I think the recent placements of it put it like outside of Tyranoraptora outside of Comsignate today it's a basal Solorosaur so not in one of those more derived groups Still one of those advanced bird-like theropods, but not, say, as derived as, like, um, Tyrannosaurus or Velociraptor or Gallimimus. Though it is cool to have the feather impressions. I, I don't think you, you can see banding in Sinoceropteryx itself. You can actually, like, kind of see the banding between the lighter and the darker uh, feathers. Uh, I don't see that here, but it's still, still such a cool find. I hope one day uh, we get a name for this guy. And next up, we have Rampyrhynchus, which is uh, like a late Jurassic, well, I guess they call them Rampyrhynchoids, but that's not like an official grouping. We went over this in our Flying Monsters, yes, Flying Monsters review, uh, how Rampyrhynchoids, like Rampyrhynchus, had longer tails, um, smaller heads. You see it has like a fifth toe sticking out and that would have say connected a flap a cruopatagium or uropatagium or connected a flap to the other hind leg so it kind of has a parachute for a butt <laughs> right and they have these really long wings which is cool the neck is maybe shorter in something like than uh quetzalcoatlus for sure uh it's a it's a cool animal it would have lived in europe i believe late jurassic europe um, still a, a very small pterosaur, and we've seen this one before, and uh, it was in Dinosaur Revolution, right? Picks the teeth from the Allosaurus, I think. Or at least it has like this supply, right? Where it's running around with the, what was it, Tanny Cololaguris, maybe? 
and they have like some animal drama there. Okay, let's let's keep going. We're into animal drama stories. Oh no, it's like a Barbie movie all over again. All right, so <laughs> next we have Dunkley Ustius, which I think also got a new paper that just dropped. Or at least I saw in Seven Days of Science, which I watched. Thank you, Benji Thomas and friends, for your uh, weekly updates. What was it? What happened with it? I think they're also talking about the body shape and how it would have looked. And that brings me to the fact that the body shape has changed for Dunkley Ustius. Um, here, maybe this is the only outdated bit because this is such a recent uh, study or uh, an idea proposed because we don't have much of the rest of the body. We have the armored skull and maybe a few bits and pieces here and there. So we don't know what the actual body shape totally was. So before it was given a more shark-like appearance. But um, yeah, this is uh, outdated. Now it's thought that it was a much shorter, more squat animal. So instead of like a 30 foot creature, it's more like what 13 feet, like four meters now. And they do that by calculating, what is it? The eye to the end of... <laughs> It's right on the tip of my tongue. But they calculate this length here, and that seems to be a good indicator of how long the animal is overall. And so they got a much more squat animal, <laughs> a much shrunken animal, rather than the giant behemoth of the seas that we've seen so often. Still, that doesn't mean Dunkleosteus was any less cool or awesome of a creature or anything that we shouldn't enjoy studying as much. In paleontology, there's like this thing where you want everything to be big and epic and awesome but uh, just because it's not big doesn't mean it's not uh, fun or interesting it doesn't make it any less of an animal anyways let's continue hi Dunkley Ustias we didn't see this in the AMH all right and one really cool one that like I, I knew about Globidens but seeing it in person it just it kind of blew my mind. Like, it's gross. It's off-putting. It, it looks like something that shouldn't exist. <laughs> this is just a freak of nature that needed to die. Um, of course, I'm being hyperbolic, but it's just a gross-looking animal. It's weird. I mean, it's a mosasaur. So it's like this aquatic lizard reptile that's in the seas at the late cretaceous and i think it lives to the latest cretaceous but it just has these disgusting looking teeth <laughs> i just totally ruined the whole thing it it looks off like shrooms are growing out of it i don't know why it's so weird okay well i i, I do know why this is for, for crushing the shells of say aminoids or I think there was stomach contents found. Uh, I'm researching this for my Prehistoric Planet 2 review, which is written. It's written. I'm going to record it right after I record this. But um, you find, like, shells of, like, clams and stuff in its stomach contents. So you know it was eating um, hard prey. And it has these adaptations to crush and break through the shells. Which makes sense, but it's just I, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to look at this, but I do want to look at this. It's gross and weird and strange. It shouldn't exist. This is something that shouldn't exist. Imagine a tyrannosaur with such features. That's basically what we have here. All right, get out of here, Globidens. Uh, another aquatic animal here. I guess this is the aquatic theme. I did structure this. Um, is Basilosaurus, which is another just bizarre looking creature. Now, it says Saurus. This isn't a lizard or a reptile. This is a Miocene whale. And it... Okay, first of all, the face is gnarly and the teeth are just huge and bulbous and strange. But the body shape, it's just like a giant sea serpent. It's a big snake whale thing. Like, it, it has the front flippers right and then it's just this giant it's really absurdly long snake-like body it's really gross and off-putting and strange and you can see here in the background there are just these tiny stubby hind limbs Hi, Indy. oh indy wants to see okay come on indiana let's look at the bacillosaurus 
Oh, do you like the Bacillosaurus? He got a haircut. So he used to be fluffier than this. But he's very handsome and polite. Are you being polite today? Are you being a good boy? Okay. Yeah, uh, this is... It was semi-nightmare fuel, so... Uh, let's continue. Sorry for this guy who I accidentally photographed. If that's you, let me know in the comments. I'll give you a shout-out. Alright. Uh, so now we're moving on to uh, more dinosaurs. And I like how they organize it. They have, like, different locations, different localities, uh, formations. Like, you have Hell Creek section here, and then you have a Morrison one, and then there's a Dinosaur Park formation area. So, I, I like the way it's structured. It's very well done. Hey, baby. Mm, he's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. Okay. All right, so... Uh, there's Edmontosaurus and Thescalosaurus. And one thing over the AMNH automatically, there are no dragging tails. There's not a single tail that slinks along the ground, which is good because that hurt my soul a little there. It was not <laughs> good in New York. I don't know. New York got a stub of your game. David Cope, give us another $40 million or something because that needs to be redone. Um, yeah, the tails are slung up high like horizontal parallel to the rest of the body and parallel to the ground not going down along the ground this is some like obvious stuff if any paleo documentary showed this like that would be just instant easy points off that like a d or an f at that point um so <laughs> thank goodness they don't do that um it is cool it's nice i like it we've seen it in montasaurus a lot of times before you can see the beak here or like you know the core the bony core that will grow in the beak so you know not much else to say about Imanosaurus but this will probably be Imanosaurus anectins if it's living in uh, at this time period rather than the earlier Eregalus or the upper uh, Alaskan Edmontosaurus Kukpikensis which you know was further north they lived up in the cold uh, here's Desclosaurus uh, don't got much to say about that Sclosaurus. It, it is what it is. It's a small, smaller ornithopod from this time period. Is that Sclosaurus a digger? I think there's like ideas that it dug and there's uh, other small ornithopods that dug uh, uh, burrows, I think would be the proper term. And then you can hide in the burrows, live in the burrows, all that good stuff. So, all right. Awesome. <laughs> Let's keep going. And here we have a, a really awesome one. This is kind of like the centerpiece of, I would say, the entire museum. But there is one cooler one that I want to talk about soon. Um, but here we have the Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. And just an epic pose. So it's, there is this idea that T-Rex would like rip the heads off of Triceratops and eat like the, the thick neck muscle. Um... I guess so, maybe. You do get bite marks on Triceratops frills, so maybe this was one cause of that. Uh, I think with this is Triceratops horridus. It has the more curved brow horns rather than the more straight horns. Um, it's just epic. <laughs> it's so cool to be there standing next to um, these two titans. Uh, it's such a, an epic, awesome scene here. The, just this the greatest predator that ever walked the earth taking down and just like grabbing <laughs> it, the Triceratops is, is probably already dead by this point but um, this pose is really really something uh, I'm not sure how true that is that it would have been ripping off Triceratops heads but it is a fun idea and maybe that's why I just find a bunch of Triceratops heads lying around I would like to assume that the T-Rex killed this Triceratops itself, so we don't give Jack Horner too much credit saying that T-Rex is a scavenger. <laughs> Though, of course, um, they wouldn't pass an easy meal. When you're eight or more tons, you gotta eat a lot, so you're not gonna pass up on a free meal. But they would still hunt for sure, and we do have fossil evidence of that. So, sorry Jack Horner, but your idea sucked. I just, I just can't get over this. This is <laughs> really good. Um, I didn't take this picture. This uh, was online. Um, 
my wife took the picture of this. I didn't actually get the picture of this. So just just so you know. All right. And finally, this is the last section here is with the Morrison creatures, and this was my favorite. Um, I didn't get a good shot of the Diplodocus and Camarasaurus, but you, you do see that I'm in the background. <laughs> I think this is the Camarasaurus, and no, this is the Diplodocus, and then the Camarasaurus is behind it. But they do show that kind of distinction between like Diplodo Dip Diplodocoids and macronarian sauropods so you have like the diplodocus which would have been more horizontal and its relatives and then you have the like the high high browsing macronarian sauropods like camarasaurus and brachiosaurus so different niches there and here we have allosaurus and i've got to say i've seen some several allosaurus in my lifetime and this is my favorite allosaurus that i've seen it's, I don't know, something about it. It's very down to earth. Very, it feels very present, like it's there, like it's an actual creature. It's posed in a way that it feels like it's kind of still alive, but it's sitting and watching you. It's, it's epic. Like it's sitting there and you can stand next to it, next to the Allosaurus and like you want to pet it, but no, you can't pet it. Uh, <laughs> But, and I don't know, something about its shape, it looks like menacing and fearsome, but it's tame, it's sitting. Uh, something's going on here that I really enjoyed the Allosaurus. Actually, excuse me, Indiana, I, I bought the shirt <laughs> of the Allosaurus because of course I did. <laughs> I'm going to waste my money on things like that. Uh, and it was in channel colors too, so I couldn't pass up. We got the red and black going on. Um, this is Allosaurus fragilis, which has like a shorter premaxilla, more stout premaxilla than the, like the longer snouted Allosaurus gemadseni. Um, and yeah, this would have been a very common predator in this time and place. I think it's the most common theropod we have. Maybe aside from Coelophysis, but I think I'm, my brain is telling me it's Allosaurus. And then in the Cretaceous, it would be Albertosaurus. But yeah, a very common um, theropod. That's why people say it like ruled the Jurassic. It's the line of the Jurassic. That's not far from the truth. We have a lot of these. Maybe that's due to uh, preservation bias. Or we just got lucky to find a really good Cleveland Lloyd locality of them. When... Well, that's a, that's a separate topic for another day. Why they all ended up there. But we do have a lot of Allosaurus. So it's just one of those super iconic predators. Oh, okay. You're out of order. But I don't mind. Um, we have a creature that likes to gape and it likes to suck. My two favorite things. So <laughs> this is, how it says, Romaliosaurus. Romaliosaurus. And um, this was a very impressive skeleton. It took up like a whole wall. But I was reading that it'd be like over 20 feet, 6 to 7 meters. So it's not like a huge giant Predator X sort of um, pliosaur. But it's, it's still, when you're standing next to it, you, you don't really notice the difference. Like it feels huge. Um, but Romeliosaurus, this isn't... This isn't a pliosaur, though it has that pliosaur build. It's an offshoot plesiosaurian. So it's not like a, how do I say, plesiosauroidea or pliosauroid, I believe. It's super families. But it's an offshoot, a basal one, like from the late Triassic, early Jurassic. That would have ruled, uh, that would have lived in the seas and ate on like ichthyosaurs and stuff like that. So it's definitely uh, foreshadowing what's to come with other distant relatives. I mean, it's such an impressive specimen. I love this. Hey, baby. Oh, my boy. He just wanted to be held. My little boy just wanted to be held and loved. Just loved a little. Okay. <laughs> and next up, I think this is the second to last one, a Stegosaurus. And, okay, it's kind of a jumbled mess, but fossils tend to come as jumbled messes. They do organize it a bit. You can see the head down over here and you have some of the plates leading up to the spikes back here. 
And it was just cool to see. And he got that old pebbly skin. So we actually know what their covering looked like. It wasn't feathers. It wasn't fluffy. You don't just throw feathers on everything and call it accurate. This was a pebbly scaled animal. And uh, this was across um, the path from like a fossil preparation room. Man, I would have loved to go in there and like talk to the guy. There was someone working in there. I don't know who he was. Um, it would have been awesome to have like a Jurassic Park moment where you stop the tour, you go in, you break into the room with the actual scientists and talk to them about the creatures. Because this guy was working on, um, there was a sign that said he was working on Megapnosaurus, which was would have been very interesting to talk to him about and see what kind of uh, ideas he has, what's going on with research and its validity. Uh, that would have been fun to talk about and just poke his brain a, a little bit. But alas, I could not do that. <laughs> I could have taken a picture of him. I didn't feel like intruding on his privacy and just exposing this dude uh, online without his permission. <laughs> so <laughs> let's be polite and kind to the paleontologists who are working and the fossil preparators. And I think this is the last one here. My favorite. You know how I love my Ceratosaurus, even though I'm a traitor and I'm wearing an Allosaurus shirt today. It's okay. You can love all dinosaurs. You don't have to pick a team. <laughs> Got Stegosaurus and Ceratosaurus. So this is like behind that. Uh, you have the Camarasaurus here and the Diplodocus here. T-Rex over here is kind of behind that display. So you might miss it if you're not looking for it. And please do not miss this. There, there were a few um, skeletons and displays that were tucked in corners. So it was only like going back through that I actually saw some of these. Now, I saw this on my first time, but like the smile dot I missed for my first time. Um, but this is cool. But you have the Stegosaurus, the tail is coming around and you see the spikes here. And then there's the Ceratosaurus. What is this? Oh, oh, this is the tail of the Camarasaurus, okay. Yeah, but then you have the Ceratosaurus getting whacked by the tail and falling over as I like kind of going to a dying pose. It's and knocked to the ground. Uh, okay, so Asaurus is getting beat up once again. But this is so epic, I'll allow it. Like, it's such a cool fossil display. Um, the battle between the predator and prey. Um, and it, it was awesome standing next to this thing. Uh, it's a really gnarly predator, especially looking at it up close. Like, I mean, we know what Ceratosaurus looks like, but seeing it face to face with those those big crests and those long teeth and in this cool pose and it's bigger than I give it credit for. It looks like a bigger specimen than the one they had in New York. Um, hi. Hi. So it's a, it's a very imposing creature and then that just adds to the ferocity of Stegosaurus as it just shreks up this guy here. Like, you think this is an impressive predator until you see it getting whacked by a stegosaurus with relative ease. It's it's such a cool display. Man, this was my favorite. I love this. I was, like, staring at this for, like, 20 minutes. Okay, probably that's an exaggeration, but I was staring at this thing. Do you like the stegosaurus? Do you like the ceratosaurus? Okay, I think he, he got excited about the ceratosaurus. So I think he's a ceratosaurus fan, too. This... Um, this is the last slide here. Um, there are a lot of other animals, and I wish I could have talked about them all, but I'm not an encyclopedia, <laughs> and also we would be here forever. That It was such a good experience at the Smithsonian. I had such a wonderful time with it. So many of the displays were informative. Um, they seem up to date, most of them. They look really nice. They tell a story. Um, it, there's just a lot to appreciate here, and I like how it's organized into different formations. It's such a good museum, and there were other parts to it that were cool. You see, like, a lot of taxidermied creatures in different wings. Hey, you gnawing on me? Oh, okay, he's just licking on me. <laughs> and you actually had to, like, go around the building to find all the extinct animals. I'm sure I didn't even find all of them. But you would have to go to like the, the Australian section of taxidermy creatures to find a thylacine, um, 
the Basilosaurus was like in an ocean area along with uh, Dunkleosteus. I forget. There was like a hidden Mosasaur area. I, I forget what, what wing that was in. But you have to go around and look for all this stuff. Um, it's a really good time. Uh, I totally highly recommend this. Definitely I'm giving this an A, maybe an A+, plus if I'm feeling generous today. Maybe an A+. Plus. It was like near Magneto levels of perfection. Alright, I think Indiana enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. My wife had a good time. And then my um, brother and sister-in-law went like a few weeks after me and were raving about it too. Um, so, Smithsonian, I definitely give it um, a very high grade, high A or A+. Plus. Washington, D.C. as a city, was it was very awesome, very fun to visit. Um, to visit. It's a swamp and it's filled with corrupt people. <laughs> I've never seen a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. But it was cool. It was cool. I got to see the history, natural history. So I highly, highly recommend it. Even if it is fake. <laughs> Alright guys, remember if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and then check out my social media. See you next time.